Hi guys. Okay, I'm back from my uh, my long lunch and uh, answering a lot of uh, comments and uh, friends reaching out to me because I changed my uh, Facebook uh, profile picture because some people weren't uh, accepting my re friend request because they never saw a picture of a Z on my actual Facebook page, which I really don't go on much anymore now that I found uh, this Z uh, Facebook page. I'm always on that. Uh, yeah, so with that being said, I'm back to work. And what I'm doing right now is uh, trimming up uh, some pieces that I took off. Remember this big piece right here that the uh, suspension goes into? Well, I'm de deburring where all the rust and stuff was and the uh, the pieces of uh, metal. I got one more to do right here. Yeah, if you can see it. It's a piece from the frame rail that's inside. I'm going to knock that out. And the reason why I'm just cleaning this stuff up and I'm not sandblasting it and prepping it to be installed because I'm just test fitting everything right now because I don't know how these uh, reproduction frame rails uh, will line up. Uh, right now, it seems like the front's a little short on the top, but the top doesn't really matter so much as the bottom where everything bolts to. It has to be pretty much the same height if the top is off a little bit, eighth of an inch, quarter inch or so. I don't think it'll matter much. So I'm going to pop this uh, little piece out here and show you where I'm at. And my rotisserie right down here makes for a really good uh, uh, something for a dolly because I can just hammer on it and it saves my, my, my floor a little bit. I should have ground this down more before I uh, started videoing. I thought it was just going to knock right off, but it's not. But it's all good. All right, I put all my stuff back together. I uh, I did that little video earlier on uh, all, the, all the stuff I use. Materials, hammers, kind of why I use certain things. Um, there's something I didn't mention about my snap-on hammers. Why I use the snap-on ones versus whether it's Matco, Cornwall, or especially uh, Harbor Freight ones. Uh, I know that the hammers are cheaper there but the reason why i use the snap-on ones is the head of them we can see it but the head of it is really flat uh, all the other hammers are rounded so when you're trying to hammer stuff out it actually makes dents in it um so both my uh oh, here we go here's the hammer that shows it so both of my snap-on hammers have flat heads on them uh, i won't get too close so see how flat that is it seems like the aftermarket or the cheaper hammers have rounded heads like the ball peen hammer and some are even rounder than that and uh, when you're trying to work the metal it actually makes dents. I mean some in some places if you're doing curves for where dents are then that's fine but uh, mostly uh, the, the snap-on ones I think are the best they have a great feel and they're flat the, the, heads, of them, the heads of them are flat. Cut another MIG weld out. It seems to have a lot of MIG welds on the ends of these things. All right, that's all cleaned out. Remember I made my measurement of uh, 27 and 3 quarters inches from the hole in the front of the radiator sports. So I already have that marked out here. And I already made my uh, 
drilled out my eighth inch holes for the self-tapping screws. Um, so I'm gonna put that on this side so you guys can see me put that in place. And don't forget, this is all trial and error. I haven't done any of this yet. So we're all learning this at the same time. So I made my mark right here. And I had already put this in place and made a, used a magic marker and marked out four holes. Don't need many. Oh, one, and one other thing. Remember I told you there was a MIG weld on the top? So here's the MIG weld right here on the top. And I left some of it. Uh, how can I show you that? I left some of the MIG weld ridge on the top. So that actually goes right to the top of that frame rail. So the height of it, it just stops right in place. Little tricks, little tricks to keep it from moving everything around. Because I made a lot of mistakes working on other cars and it gets caught. Uh, it doesn't get costly, it gets, you, lose, you lose time. So if there's a way to make it easier, I always try to find that way. So I just saved you guys a bunch of time just by that little that little bit of information. Let's see if I can show you that real quick. So that piece of, uh, where is it? That piece of weld is right there, right on top of the frame rail. So it lines right up. So it gets, it gets you within an eighth of an inch, which is pretty close for these old cars. All right, so I'm gonna put this in here. Don't want to hit them too hard because you'll burn through and then you gotta make another hole. This inside here, this fits all uh, flush against the apron from the from the other side. It's all touching here. Here's the uh, subframe holes. Those all line right up. This hole, oh, you can't see it. Uh, let me change it. This hole, remember this window I put in? I close that up, and that fits right inside that hole right there. Which I'm going to be losing this. I'm going to make a new one, but I just wanted to line that up in that hole. And the radiator support in the front is right where it needs to be. Uh, the frame rail to the radiator support. Up here, it's right up against the firewall where it needs to be. Uh, let's see if I can show you something else. So, uh, right here, it all lines up the old paint marks the only thing I noticed is right here for some reason I don't know if you can see that or not the radiator support is a pretty big gap in there but I don't know why and when I put this piece back in the original spot there's a little bit of a gap but I can bend that flange I hope not too close I can't even tell what I'm pointing at hopefully that I can bend that flange down to make that work too and I can bend that down make it work like I said the bottom part is the most important I hope that all came out on the video because I didn't see what, anything that was going on. Um, all right. I got to clean up this spot a little bit. Got a couple little more welds I got to clean up on this side. Again, I'm just doing all this stuff for fitness. Uh, for fitness, I'm going to end up taking it all, sandblasting it, treating it with paint and stuff. And if you look right here, come back over here. Uh, this piece right here is pretty flush with the top of the rail. Um, the floor, the floor rail goes 
inside here and on top of that and up to this edge hopefully I haven't tried it yet that's why I'm piecing it together uh, all right let's see here's the other piece right here It'll go somehow. And the reason why I'm building it this way is because I saw somebody do the floor panels and then put the rails in and his rail his floor panels when he welded them in were too high so when he put the frame rails in he had a huge gap and he didn't know how to figure that out so with when I saw that I'm like okay I don't think I want to go that way because I don't know where the rails are and the floor is easier to bend than the rails but this is the stuff is pretty solid uh, when I was at lunch some guys were uh, telling me, asked me why I wasn't using, oh, I think they were bad dog frame rails or something like that. So somebody sent me a link and I looked at them, but they were only little pieces. It wasn't the full rail. It was kind of like a slip on and I didn't understand what it was. So I, I told the guy, thanks for the info and the link and stuff, but for what I need, I need the full thing. And yeah, they're the, I guess the bad dog ones were a lot thicker than these oh yeah these right here um, but for this application they wouldn't work because this car is gone it's junk junk now but usually what I always told people if it's rusted and high mileage no matter what you do to it it's still junk but this will be worth something hopefully after um, so I got that put in there even where it was when uh see it's up on top of this flange pretty much where it was well you know where uh, it, it was welded from the factory and uh, this one right here it's really close um, the whole thing has to come forward a little bit but it's right here it's uh, it, it, I can clamp it right on for the most part Yeah, that pulls that floor right in on that rail. Not bad. I see something that's going on right here, though, that uh, I'm going to have to figure out. Back here, uh, there's something going on with these two meet. It meets here pretty good, which I'm going to clamp right now. I can find my small brush here. Again, I'm just piecing this thing together to see where we end up. Because right now, this is this is way up past that floor. This this piece right here should be down with this one which is uh, not very close right now. This is a big puzzle. This is, this is gonna be a big puzzle. That's okay. Like I tell everybody I know, I'm not as scared. I'll, you just figure it out. You just gotta move stuff. Make it fit before you weld it. You weld it, you're done. Um, yeah, so this strut piece is pretty much where it needs to go. I'm glad, I'm happy with that, and I'm happy with this. This right here has to be bent a little bit. It's, uh, those little teeth that we had underneath here, those are touching. But the apron, the apron's off. I just stick my finger in there a little bit. So, yeah. 
I don't know if I should leave the video on or keep going. <laughs> I'm thinking this is probably this is probably where I'm gonna have to put an edit. All right, I can see my line up here. The flange is about an eighth of an inch short up top up here where you can uh, where the old paint was. I'll show you, see if I can show you real quick. If you see right here, let me get my marker. I'm gonna mark where the old one was. You can see the paint line. So if you look inside here, you can see where the old, old panel was. It went this high, the old panel. If you can see that. So it's about an eighth of an inch off, height-wise, all the way down. So that flange could be small from uh, when it was remanufactured. I don't know. But it lines up here, so that was that's why I left the bottom piece here, so it it bolts up. That up here is minor. That's minor. I'm gonna drill a couple holes in the other side and uh, put some self-tapping screws in there to hold that in place. I didn't bring enough vice grips for more. Oh, and I don't dare rotate the car. Because of the weight distribution. <clears throat> Rotisserie again, like I said before, doesn't make a great mattress. Drill up, even though you have glasses on. I always close my eyes because in my luck, it all ends up in my face, in my eyes. lines up against the apron pretty good <laughs> up top here
So at lunch, I had a guy from England message me on Messenger saying he's loving my videos, but he's not building a Dots uh, Z, he's building some type of Dotson station wagon. And he says there's only three of them in the country of England. building it in his driveway. And I said, well, I'm doing all my videos like I'm doing it all in the driveway, but in my garage, like the average person at home. So he's pretty excited. <clears throat> all right, so I get that. Uh, somewhat screwed in. I don't like the width of this thing right now, but it's all right, I'll get it. Oh, there, that's, all right, that makes sense. What's going on there? All right, that frame rail's That's why I didn't leave, take my firewall out because I didn't see that line where it was. This has to come up, actually come up this way. So I left where I, where is my picture? You can see right here. Right here, you can see where the frame rail was. I like leaving, uh, not taking, cutting everything away for alignment purposes. So right here, you can see where the frame rail line goes there. But here, the end of the panel where it was, was is right here. I don't know if you can see that or not. So that frame rail actually has to come up. See how it all bends? Because the apron's all rotted, this has to come up. And when it comes up, it actually lines up pretty good. So... I'm going to, uh, I need another pair of vice grips. Never have enough vice grips. I'm gonna take these, I'm gonna go here, bring this up. All right, I'm gonna show you something real quick. I couldn't understand why see it right here my frame rail my uh, uh my welding spot welds were showing i couldn't understand why i thought the rail was all out of whack but with me putting the frame rail in the rough area general vicinity of where it's supposed to go putting that up there like that and closing that up that fits really good right here, and actually brings the uh, the new frame rail up to the marks where uh, the old spot wells were. So I'm going to put a self tapper in here because this metal is so strong and this one's junk. I'm actually going to uh, put put the, the self tapper from the inside out. That way it bites into more more metal. Good bit. One of my friends that's commenting on my new profile picture is a, a painter at a shop, a local shop I used to work at years ago. He built a 69 Mustang Fastback and I asked him how long it took him to get his car done. 
And he said, 13 years, 3,000 hours. And I told him that it can't take me that long because I'll be dead before the car's done. So this is, this is not a show car. This is going to be a driver. But I need to get it. I, this is gonna be, it's not a show car, but it's going to be a driver. So I need to get it safe and rebuild all this mess that's not here. But I know it's not going to take 12 years to get the bottom done. I mean, he did all new gas. I must, he, he must have paid as he went. And knowing uh, Chris, it's got to be a beautiful car. I don't know what color he painted it. But body men do some pretty stupid things, to tell you. It always looks easy until you tear into it. Now, thinking about it, uh, I don't know if I could do this if I didn't have my, I don't even know if I'd I even attempt this if I didn't have the experience I have. Uh, so you guys that are doing this right from just because you want to build it, um, I'm, 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 uh, you know, I don't know if I'd say I'm impressed or what, but uh, it's inspiring to me because you guys are just jumping into it and going and finding all the the work that gets involved in it. I mean, this, I've done this on full on late model cars right here in this garage. I've, I've rebuilt cars and uh, because I know what to do, shortcuts, it's easy for me, but to jump into a wreck or a rust bucket without having any experience. I don't know. All right. So that's where it needs to go, which is good. This piece is good where it needs to go. So I'm going to drill that to lock that in place. Oh. And I hope you guys don't mind if I chat while I'm doing this thing because it can get, I guess it can get kind of boring if nothing's being said at all. So I'm drilling a couple self tappers down into uh, this brace. Another thing about self tapping a, a bolt, if you just do an eighth inch through both of them, you can adjust the outside piece. But if you make a bigger hole on one on the outside, then it gives you a room to, a, you can loosen it and make a little adjustments here and there. So if I have to move it, I'll make the, the first hole bigger. But right now that fits pretty good. When I put my self tappers on the frame rail through the apron, I went through the big hole where I drilled out. So that way it gives me a quarter inch to move stuff around. If you didn't stand with that, that's all about. See that pulls that, that pulled that right up tight. The metal was about an eighth of an inch, quarter inch away, but now it's, it pulled it right up tight. Right here it's touching. Down here, not so much, but you know, it is what it is. Probably just smack that that way a little bit. I'm thinking again. I'm gonna show you guys what I got going on here. I, I, I don't know how I'm gonna figure this out. All right, let me get my flashlight and flip you guys around.
right? So, where is it? A little bit of a dilemma here. I don't know if you can see. Can you see that? No. I might have to take this thing off the... Uh, I can't see inside the hole that I need to see. All right, I'm gonna pull you off. So I can turn your. All right, this is what I got going on here. This right here is the original apron. I can't see it, but this is the new frame rail. So there's a half inch gap here. I can shove my finger in there. And this piece of the rail isn't lining up with the floor. But that's pretty much just knocking this back down to meet this, because I know that's the wrong curve. So I would just do this. I wish I could videotape it this way. It seems like the camera's better, but then I can't see what I'm, if the camera's in the right spot. Or maybe, I don't know. I can try it, I guess. This is non-selfie mode. Let's see if I can do it. Bear with me, guys. Bear with me. Looks like the picture is better, but I'm behind it now, so I really can't see what I'm doing. All right. Get them vice grips again. Of course, need a bigger hammer. Uh, need the bigger hammer. All right, well that's looking good. I think they just got the angle wrong. All right, I want to show you something. See if you guys can see this. You see how big that gap was, right? Well, most people probably would just weld that and then get into a lot of trouble. But uh, I gotta take this back off of here. But remember how open that gap was? So now, using the vice grips, that is actually touching the uh, floor rail there and there, and it actually, uh, it's not focused good. There's a notch right here that the frame rail will go into the floor rail, and with this notch in here that the KF Vintage put in, 
the floor is going to go right from here and it's going to be nice and smooth to this point. But this is still off right here, so this this part right here might have to come down a little bit more, but I got it to line up there and line up right there with a little bit of hammering and dollying. So we'll see. I don't know where to go next. Probably have to start putting a floor in or something. I don't know. I'll put you guys back on here. Try it right here. Like I said, we're doing this together. I ain't got a clue how this stuff fits. The other side will be easier. All right. I think if I put a couple more self tapping screws into from the apron into the rail. I'm gonna flip. I'm gonna flip this back so it's uh, right side up. I think that's what I'm gonna do. All right. So bear with me. screws. I'll take you out back and I'll show you my little contraption I made to hold the car from flipping around. So this is what I made for my rotisserie. I, oops, I got it the wrong way. It's not selfie mode, so I'm going to show you this right here. Check this out. This part right here, this part right here keeps the height going. I gotta move this. this tote. So this part right here, I measured this off to keep the car at a certain level. Push down on my pipe. And here's my lock. And I can unlock it, and it flips back over. There's so much, there's so much metal in that passenger floor that it goes beyond level. I'm gonna get it back over and I'll show you what I made on this side to lock it in place until I get that passenger floor out. Yeah, that passenger floor is so heavy with all that eighth inch steel that guy put in there. So all I did was a modification to my rotisserie. So I drilled that inch and a half hole 
right here because I had an inch and a half hole in the brace that went through. So I get it, I just pull it where I need to go and shove that pipe in there. And that holds it from rolling over. Thank God. And don't forget, don't worry guys, I still gotta do the blueprints I know for the rotisserie. I might do that before I go play hockey tonight. 9.30. Yep, old guy like me playing hockey with the young boys. Um, tonight's the final championship uh, playoff game. And we're ahead, we're ahead in our division for the playoffs for, by five points. So tonight will let us know. Depending on what happens, we could be in our first championship game coming up this Friday. Been in the league 20 years. I've only been to one championship game. And we actually won that one. And trust me, I'm not a really good hockey player. I suck, but it's a lot of fun. All right. Uh, let's see where we're at here. So, so, where are we going? We're going over here. We're going down to... where I notched this thing out for the uh, heel section. So I'm gonna show you what I did here, which is kind of cool. Oh, I forgot my hole puncher. I was gonna show you the crimper thing going on, but. Um, so remember a couple videos ago, we were talking about the heel piece. The heel piece that I cut and notched out and can't find it right now. Ah, oh, here it is. All right, here it is. So remember I cut this piece out? I, uh, I had drilled this piece out. And I know I didn't take a video of trimming out the heel piece, but I, uh, whenever I do uh, late model collision stuff, I always, I keep these brackets, because it's something to weld to. So, I'll, I'm gonna put this tail, this uh, heel section in. So there's like an eighth of an inch gap between the new piece and the original. I got my hole in there someplace. I drilled it out. Let's go right there. Let me put my self tappers in there, and I can show you what I'm talking about. Oh, am I glad I brought these self-tapping screws home? Glad I brought these self-tapping screws home. I already marked this stuff out. I test fitted it before. I always saw a magic marker the old, the old, where the old stuff is. Because it's easier to line up, even though it's uh, reproduced parts, it gets you close. You need to be close. Gloves are good, but sometimes you just they get in the way. So, I don't know if you, I can zoom in. Can I zoom in? 
Oh, hell yeah. So this is what I did here. I always try to use the structure to uh, line up stuff and it's easier to weld. And then my marker. So what I always do is try to mark the panel where I think I'm gonna, where I know it's gonna be so I can line it up again next time. So I made these marks right here, up and down. So I know I get my length and I mark across to get my height to where it needs to go. Um, there's a little, I, I had to lower this panel a little bit because of the way the floor, the, the main floor ended up into this flange. Um, so I made my mark across here. Like I said, made these marks coming up. And right here, because the, the corner wasn't, uh, the curve was kind of stiff and it wasn't quite right, I just notched it out with the, with the cutoff wheel. So I can bend that a little bit and I'll weld it solid. And behind here, going like this to here, that's where the main brace is for the seat belt. And right here, I left the eighth of inch gap. And here, the floor panel goes beyond it. I'm gonna use my crimping tool that I showed you, the hole puncher, the other side's a crimping tool. And I'm gonna crimp this metal from here to here, where there's another brace that goes right here that goes kind of like this underneath. So I'm gonna weld solid to that, and I'm gonna flange it from here so this piece will fit right on top of the other piece and it'll be smooth in here. There'll be a little bit of a notch on the back side, but right here it'll be smooth and then I can just seam seal both sides and then I can uh, weld it solid or just do uni spots. Like the floor would be right here. This is the floor when you put it back in, it's just spot welded. It's not welded solid. But this, this piece from here to here is one from the factory. So when I flange it, it's easy to weld. I just stitch weld it all the way across. And right here, if you can see that, I'll turn the camera a little bit. When you get this panel from KF uh, Vintage, this is the left hand, this is the right hand side. Right here, it's, right here it's solid. It's a solid piece, right? So I actually had to cut that away. I had to trim it right here with my with my cutoff wheel and keep doing it a little bit and then this piece will fit right in and remember I said leave your spot well marks these right here I ground them down clean them up but you can still see them so when I put that piece in there it lines right up here's the uh, I don't know if you can see it or not the seat belt hole for the bolts right there so I, I just pretty much just got to clean this up with uh, probably a die grinder, make that hole round. That piece fits right in there. And all you do, the spot wells are already cut, uh, drilled, is just drill them in all the way around. These weren't, these weren't even spot weld. I think these were just MIG welded in here. And, uh, and that fits right in. Bing, bang, boom, just like that. And then once that's in there, then you can... Uh, that heel piece that I had taken off, I can find that thing. Got pieces everywhere. So remember on the last video I showed you this was together. These were together. So I drilled them out. There's a spot weld right there. So I'll clean, I'll deburr this a little bit, leave the mark a little bit, put these in the sandblasting uh, cabinet that I have that's been there for. Uh, I probably bought that 10 years ago and never used it, but now I will. So that goes like that. So this goes inside here. And then this piece will actually, um, when I'm ready, uh, take it off. and then that piece, once it's all cleaned up, I just... 
weld it right back there in place. Oh, I gotta zoom it out. And once I weld that in, and then I'll just take and weld this piece back in place. And that'll be done. And then the floor will actually, the floor will actually weld to that where the heel piece lines up. See if I can turn it around. I know the camera's all over the place, dude. I'm not a video guy. So, and see the where the, the heel piece lines right up? So I'm just grabbing this thing. I'm trying to film and do this at the same time without line right up to the whole piece, to the uh, heel piece of the floor panel. All right, I'm going back up. I think I'm gonna put this in selfie mode. It's easier to see. Sorry for the hands. All right. Wow, that's a lot of mouthful. But I'm hoping it's making sense. Now this piece right here is way up in the air, way up, and I don't know why. I don't know why. Where's my straight edge? Where is it? Anyway, I'll fill the four pieces. I have no idea what's going on with that, guys, just so you know. I wish somebody was doing a video so I could, they could show me what to do, so I don't have to spend my time with dealing with that part. But what, what fun would that be? This is where that guy that I met yesterday at the camera store would come in handy because he's a video. He said he's a videographer and he said he'd help me out with my videos if I needed help. All right. Let's see what we're doing here. Let's see what we're doing here. I don't like doing this without my gloves on. Maybe it's gonna work, I don't know. Can you see? Not very high. Oh, here we go. There you go. Learning about this tripod thing too. Learning a lot of stuff today. See, always got to debur your, your uh, drill stuff because it always bites in the butt after. See, this is why you deburr before you start putting stuff on, but you gotta do it eventually. So. Seems like the new metal always gets hung up on it. So what I like to do when I'm replacing parts, if it has a sharp, uh, sharp corner like this right here, a total 90, I rind it all, uh, do it like a quarter, quarter inch round on it so if you're trying to put it in place uh, in place it doesn't dig into the metal it the round keeps it from uh getting caught on anything so i'll have to remember to do that next time i put it in what i'm trying to do now is line it up get this thing lined up to go to uh the heel section which i i marked with the magic marker which shows me how far back my floor goes
Now all my tools are on the other side. done without a rotisserie if I didn't see that kid with the RX-7 with his car on a rotisserie. He was just talking about how to balance his car on the rotisserie and I seen how he built his. I seen the picture of it or just the video of it and I said I can build that. So I just made come up with my own blueprint. I didn't even make blueprints. I just cut pieces in, on the fly. I learned that from my dad. He helped me. He helped me learn carpentry, and I built two houses also. Too far. Of course, it went too far. Now that I got the sound dead, you're out of the way. Uh, oh, see if we can get you in here. So, see, I marked. I put that magic marker mark right here. I'm trying to see at the same time. I put a magic marker mark right there. Uh, that shows how far this lip right here, how far this heel piece goes under. So you can move that eighth quarter of an inch, it doesn't matter because it's flanged underneath and you're gonna out spot weld it. I just need to get it close. Um, let me flip it down a little bit. All right. More self tappers here. After I get this whole job, I'll show you something else that, that I did here. In case you guys come up with it too. All right, when I cut the, uh, flip it around. When I cut out the original floor, it was this top magic marker mark, but the flange from the uh, the retro piece, the uh, remanufactured piece, is a little shorter, and I needed to line it up so these two are the same. Uh, so that's why this is a little bit below that line. So even though you make the original line, doesn't mean it's going to fit in the exact same place because you got to match the other stuff. So, and yeah, there's a little bit of a gap there, but there's a little bit of rust. So I just cut it clean. I'm going to take a little piece of metal, leftover metal, bend a little angle and weld it in there. But I wanted to show you the difference in the holes in here because this floor has to... Uh, line up in there and also I noticed this is flanged here where is it where is it? this is flanged here but this part is not flanged which it should be because this panel is going underneath it so that's why it's fitting a little tighter 
um, right there. But this side, this side fits pretty good. I hope that doesn't make it dizzy by me doing that. But uh, like I said, I'm not a video photographer. I'm even a, not even a restorator. I'm just a body man that doesn't like spending money. Having people do, having paying people to do what I can, what I can figure out. If that makes sense. Uh, all right, oh, I gotta. Trying to think of where I'm going next. I think I'm gonna make my tripod little. I just, I'll take from the other side. All right, hold on. I'm gonna take from, I don't know what to do. Damn it. Hold on a second. Hold on, I'm, I'm thinking out loud again. I'm probably gonna edit this part out anyway, so. So I'm gonna bring this down. Hopefully I can figure out how to edit in my videos. Cause I'm not a computer guy. Small. <sighs> that work? Yeah, that's good. All right, so I got that lined up over here. Now I have to bring this panel down to match the old uh, paint lines. Pair of vice grips. I just crimped that down together. Like I said, it needs to be flanged because there's a big gap there now. I just flanged it. Alright, I added these vice grips I need here to lift up the floor a little bit. I'm just looking under here, guys. It's not, this is, uh, you know, we'll figure it out. So this is where, so you can see it. I can, I can see where the uh, old floor went. Got a pair of vice grips underneath here. These type, these type of uh, vice grips right here. So it actually has like a foot on it. So if I crimp it on the rocker pan, the inner rocker this way, this will actually hold the floor in place height wise. So you can adjust that out until you get it in place and then you can uh, um, put yourself tappers in. Uh, 
Okay, I'm gonna put my salt peppers in from this side. Somehow that moved. Okay, put some self peppers in here. Putting a couple self tappers in here. Uh, remember I said about making a bigger hole? I can remember right now. I was going to use my uni spotter bit, but uh, that's all four parts from the last video I did. You know what? I'm just going to drill another hole. This will keep it from moving.
have a new drill bit, I think. Time is money, that's why I sell them in packages of 10. Just dismiss my alarm. My hockey game is not at seven o'clock tonight. It's nine forty, dude. Nine forty on a Sunday. Can you believe it? Don't get to bed till uh, nine forty, eleven thirty, twelve o'clock. <laughs> taking extra time to get a tight fit because it's definitely easier to weld that way with a tight fit than it is having a big gap you'll find out you'll find out I just noticed something pretty good about this floor. I'll show you in a minute. It's exciting. And right here, I'm drilling the floor down first because there's a little bit of a gap between the heel and the floor. I'm gonna close that up and then I'm gonna go to the inner rocker. So if I went the other way around, inner rocker first, it would, then you have to hammer the, hammer the floor down to the heel. So right here in the corner, there's a gap here and it's touching here. So I'm going to put a screw here first, which will push that down, put one here, we'll push that down and then I'll be able to tuck that in. Because let's see if you can see it here, so you can see you put the, the drill bit right behind that. So I don't like that. So I'm going to go right here. And you got to drill slow on these things because if you drill too fast, it'll burr the back side of the hole and it won't fit tight. So if you drill slow, it'll go.
check to make sure that's hitting good on the bottom. Good, down there, good. See how that tucked that right down in there good? Actually, I'm not even going to put another screw there just in case the front has to come up. If I put a screw here, if the front, if the, uh, the front has to come up, then it can't. If I stopped here, I could still bring the front up. But if I screw this here and here, then the front has to stay. Because I notice my gap gets, uh, my um, marker line gets a little wide here. Here it's touching, here it's about an eighth of an inch. There it's about, I don't know, three sixteenths. Um, yeah, so that's that. I'm gonna show you what I did on the floor, on the uh, inner rocker and the floor on this side when I cut the floor apart. I gotta open this all this back up here. So you notice uh, before I was, uh, if I would drill, if I was drilling, um, usually I would just, if I was re, uh, how can I say this? If I was just taking out the floor, I would just ground the floor down on the other, on the other side and just ground it smooth, punch holes in it and welded the floor to the inner rocker. But because I had the rocker panel off, I drilled my floor through these holes right here, which was the spot welds for the, uh, the floor panel. So I drilled those through. So now I can weld when I'm putting it, when I start doing my welding, I'm going to weld on this side and then you just got a wire brush. You ain't ne never going to see them. And on the other side, you won't even have to grind any of the spot welds at all. Um, because you'd be grinding inside the car and sparks are just flying everywhere. It's here, if you get a good burn and a good weld, even if it builds up a little bit, you won't see it. And on the inside, it won't even look like it's been replaced. See? Little tricks. Little tricks. I like doing less grinding. I hate grinding. there that one there now I want to jump real quick to something else because I'm curious if my floor is in the right spot so remember when I did the uh, it sounded, it sounded stupid, but the measurements for my, my uh, seat brackets. Okay, we're going back inside with my straight edge, which I'm looking for right now because I don't know what I do with that. I probably used it on something else. But, hold on. All right. So... Hope you guys can hear my voice. I'm getting a little more confident here and it's, I'm having fun. So I'm going to find my front brace. And what I did was when I cut it out, I deburred it. I took off all the uh, burrs, you know, except for those right there. But um, it's if you clean off all this stuff, then when you go to test fit it to see if the, the, the floor is at the right height, then you can. It's easy. It's easy enough. So remember I made my marks on the on the um, the tunnel and I made my mark over here on the uh, inner. So let's see which way this went. Not this way. All right. So I'm putting this back in. And if you look. All right. So that goes right there. That actually, that floor panel is right where it needs to be back here. It's touching. Uh, where, where is it? Can you see the flange? No, I gotta go further down with the camera. 
Oh, there it is. So the flange is right here. Here's my mark. And the flange, the floor is right up against it, which is perfect. This side's got to go down a little bit. All right, see if we can look over here. Guys, I'm excited about this. This is working out. Yeah, let me get rid of this. Get rid of the tripod. So there's my mark. Ah, it's bogus. A little bit in the middle. That's all right. So there's my mark right there. It's got to go down a little bit, which is easy to do. It's just a little bit of a bubble. Remember, I, I didn't, I didn't trim off the bottom, it, the rust a little bit on the bottom of this thing. So it's actually pushing the bracket up. But if you come over here, you can, uh, if I can find it. You can see my mark where the where the brace went, right, right there, and it lines up right. Oh man, I'm having a hard time with this camera. It's lining up right there. It is right there with my magic marker. And if I, like I said, if I would have cleaned up the rust on the bottom of this thing, that floor is at the right height. With a little bit of hammer and darling right here, it probably. Probably could go up a little bit, but I'm trying to look where my seam sealer was. Yeah, actually the floor, the, the floor where the guy put the silicone and stuff. So my floor should go up. Oh, where's my floor? Right here. The floor should go up to this seam sealer mark right here. This is where the guy put windshield urethane to put his patch in. So I actually uh, screwed it in the wrong place, but that's fine. I needed this. I needed this, this mark, so I can know how high my floor goes. So that's pretty close right there for just a test fit. Yeah, and in the back one, when I made these marks here, here, and here, and here, that's going to get my, the rear seat mounts height. And then I also made a measurement from this hole to the front of the rear hole, uh, the front hole of the rear bracket, and that's going to give me my length. Plus, I still have that on the rusty floor so I can get my width, when I put them back in, my width from here to here. It's still on this piece. And there's the rear bracket. So I put the rear bracket where I marked it on the car. And then I just leave these in place and I use my new pieces and just make the measurements and, uh, and go from there. That's why I always keep that stuff all intact. Cause it's always a great, it's always a great reference point. Awesome. But, but, I hate butts. I'm gonna show you right now, which is not looking good. That floor is pretty much where it needs to go. I think I, I think I do have to go. Well, see it line. It lines up right here. It's crazy because it lines up right here with the inner rocker like it's supposed to, all the way, right? But yet the bracket's off a little bit. But that's just hammering and dulling it. And it could be, it could be the stamp is wrong for the floor. I don't know. But that's minor. So I probably won't be able to weld it here. But I can put a weld here and the rest of it. This would be a little gap right there. Which really doesn't matter. But the big problem that I'm finding. Oh, I don't even want to come down here, but it's this right here. It's this right here. It's this. It's that. It's touching here. This has to go to the outside a little bit to fit inside that loop, uh, that bump. And I'll show you real quick. The, uh, the bump of, you know, the little body line, a bump here. 
from the floor to the heel, line right up. So this is in the right spot. This is in the right spot going forward. But the bottom is, is uh, not good. Not good. So it, I don't know which way to flip this thing. I think I'm going to flip it so the uh, left-hand side is up in the air. All right. Let me get this stuff out of here so I don't lose all my screws. All right, I'm going to put you back on the tripod. Sorry about the movement. I sure I hope I can edit this stuff out. All right, now 